Hey everybody, Joe here. Nice of you to join me today. Thanks for coming. Okay, what we're going to be taking a look at today is this, the Scion 2 tank by Inakin. Um, now, I know this has been out for a good long while and just about everybody and his brother has put out a review about it beforehand. I've been wanting to get this review out for a while, but I had a, quite a bit of a backup of stuff that I wanted to do. Um, so it, it's coming out now. Now, as I've, I will be saying in the rest of this video, uh, even with FaceTime and also during the build cam, um, there is going to be a giveaway with this review. Um, and with the, the, the build and everything else that I'm going to be putting, showing you that I'm putting in. Um, sometime, someplace in this video, there is going to be a code that is going to come tumbling across the screen. Please write down that that code. Um, you're going to need that code in order to be able to fill out the uh, entry form that is going to have that is going to be down in the description box down below. So make sure when you see that tumbling across, <clears throat> copy it down. Sorry about all the noise. It's a beautiful day, and everybody and his brother is outside right now. Um, yeah, so let's get on about this, um, Scion 2, this is the one I'm going to be building, um, I'm going to show you the black one, the black one is the one that's going to be up for grabs, and, um, a little bit of a discussion about some parts and stuff like that, and about, uh, coming stuff for this in the FaceTime, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, without any further ado... Let's head on down to the build deck and take a look at um, how what you get in the packaging and how to I do this RTA deck, RBA deck. Yeah. Um, the droning sound outside sounds like a ton of bees. Oh, it's driving me nuts today. So let's head on down below decks and uh, we'll take it take a look at it and uh, then we'll take it from there. All right. Meet you down below, Dex. Okay, folks, here we are down on the build deck. We're going to be taking a look at this today. The Scion 2 stock coil... Um, stock oil tank as well as the uh, RTA build deck okay um, this is the one that I'm going to be giving away during this show okay uh, I'm just going to be using this as an exemplar so you can see exactly what what you're getting when you turn around and uh, when you buy it at, at the local store uh, the one I'm actually going to be building out is going to be the one that I'm going to be keeping and that's the silver one that you see right here okay so I'm just going to put that up out of the way for right now. Uh, let's take a look at this black one and see what you're going to get and uh, see how it comes in the package. Okay, so I'm going to move this off to one side here. This is your box. Uh, as you can see, you have a picture of the Scion 2 here on the front of it. On the bottom, Inakin. On this side, pull tab. On the top, Inakin. On this side, Scion 2. And the two coils that it comes in. Okay, uh, the 0.28, which is 100 to 200 watts recommended range, and the 0.5 ohm, which is 70 to 110 watts recommended range. On the back here, you have the um, description of the product. Uh, you have uh, what's included. Scratch and check with the serial number on it. I guarantee you that this is an original product because I got it directly from Minikin. And of course, all your usual CE marks and everything else on the barcode. Uh, now, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to mention this to you guys right now. Uh, Inakin has recently started tightening up on its warranty procedures. Okay? If you cannot turn around and show the uh, serial number and the scratch and check authenticity code, you might not get a warranty on it. All right? Now, um... My suggestion to you is to do what I do on every product that I get, and that is don't throw out the packaging, okay? Uh, you get the product in, 
don't throw out the packaging after you take all your stuff out take your tank out of it and whatever tools that might be in there that you might need for it um, put that to one side keep your any spare drip tips to come with it in the packaging keep it all of the o-rings and everything else that come with the packaging in the package so that way sometime down the road if you need a set of o-rings a spare set of o-rings you know which one to go to you go right to that box and it's right there and you know that it's for that tank okay just saying also because of the prevalence of uh, ripoff artists out there today uh, the security code and the scratch and check with the serial number and everything else like if you're dealing with a Vandy Vey product you have to show them pictures of the uh, the, the security code uh, that's on the package so yeah definitely keep the packaging okay don't go throwing it out all right mucho importante all right all right let's take a look and see what we got inside so we're going to open this up you're going to hold on the pull tab pull this off and put that to one side now as with almost all the Inican products lately uh when you see innovation inside that's the good stuff uh they have another one where they have the other side that has the all the warranties and everything else but this one here you don't need to worry about that because everything is in this one package so you lift the tab up like so and inside and like it says here find more under the tray you have all of the uh, essentials that come for the tank uh, you have the tank itself and if I can just get down one of my little stands here I'll put that there and we'll take the tank out put this to one side so we'll take a look at that in a minute now the rest of the stuff that you get in the package here is going to be a spare drip tip. Now this drip tip that's here is an 810 style drip tip. It's exactly the same as the one that comes on the tank itself, so there's nothing special about it. You get an extra glass here, which is the straight glass for it. And I'll get more into about glasses when we get back up to FaceTime. I'll have something to explain to you about that. You also have the extra uh, coil if I can get it out of here without destroying the packaging now the extra coil that comes in here this is the 0.5 ohm uh, Canthal a1 coil uh, this is the one as it says here on the side of the package uh, yeah here we go this is the 0.5 ohm coil 70 to 110 watts the one that comes installed in here is the 0.28 100 to 200 watts okay so that's your spare coil and as you can see this uh, this one here is a tri coil each one of these coils is a single coil okay unlike the one that's in here which I'll show you in a minute or two now underneath the packaging here you have your um, your o-rings okay and you have uh, your uh, quick start guide here and you also have an Inican vape band underneath of here. Yeah, okay, so that's that's what you get in here. Okay, we're going to pop this to one side. Because uh, pretty much we don't need anything else that's in here right now. So we're going to pop that off to one side. And then we're going to take a look at this. This is the RTA deck. This is what we're going to be concentrating on this afternoon here. Um, I'm going to pop this open here. And show you exactly what comes in here um, this is what it says in can here on the top scion RTA sale only allowed in US yes and oh that's because I forgot to hear as you can see here it says sale only allowed in the US that's because this is the 3.5 millimeter milliliter version of the scion it is not the two milliliter TPD compliant uh, version of the scion that uh, you would get over in the European Union um, made in China, CE marks, Scion RTA, and on the front. Now, you also have this little blue uh, silk pull tab in here, which when you pull it out reveals the inside's packaging. Uh, in here you have the, um, the ring for the, uh, the atomization chamber ring for the uh, build deck. In here you also have the build deck itself. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you straight off the bat here okay you see this silicon o-ring that I have here be very careful 
because this thing has a tendency of coming off when you try to pull it out of the packaging. That is a very important little o-ring. It keeps the uh, juice that's around the outside of this here from getting into here and flooding out your tank. Okay, this is your airway passage here. This is your uh, positive center pin here that goes up here to this side of the deck, which is separated from the negative side, which is the outside shell of it, of the, of the deck by a peak insulator. And the screw here is the same screw here. Okay? So, yeah. Be careful of that O-ring. All right, now the rest of the stuff that you get in the package here is a wad of Japanese organic cotton. And in here you also get, if I can get it out without damaging the bag, is a little blue hex-handled screwdriver. Now, don't go tossing this thing in the garbage or tossing it into your, um, into your pile of other little blue screwdrivers because this is important. This is a very, very fine-headed hex-head driver. Okay, it is designed to work with these screws that are here. These are the, uh, you get eight extra screws here for the build deck, uh, two changes, plus also the uh, silicon O-rings like the one I showed you there. Uh, you also get uh, two Clapton coils, the three millimeter inside diameter. Um, it doesn't say anywhere on here, either on the outside packaging or even on their website, whether or not this is Cantol or what kind of metal it is. I do believe it's Cantol because when I've played with these things, they act like Cantol. Okay, so I'm going on the assumption that they are Cantol. All right, but yeah, that little blue screwdriver, don't lose it because if you do, you're going to have a bear of a time setting up this deck because it is a very, very, very small hex head um, nut driver that you'd have to use. And to tell you the truth, I don't have any others other than that little blue screwdriver, so yeah, be very careful for it, with it. Okay, that's the contents of the RTA package. Um, pop this back in here. Now, as I said before, um, when I start building this out, I'm going to be building out the silver one, which is the one I'm going to be keeping. This black one is the one I'm going to be giving away, so you're going to see exactly what's in here. Okay, so I'm going to put that there to one side, and I'm going to break out the calipers. Okay, now as you've seen earlier when I first, uh, when we first started this after my introduction, I put up all the specifications on it, so I'm just going to go through this again real quick. Um, the base diameter is 24.56, 24.7 millimeters. Oh, sorry about the, uh, the cops. I got the window open here. Um, it's a beautiful day, and I'm trying to get some breeze in here. And from top to bottom, without the removable 810 drip tip, uh, and also not including the 510 connector, you have 41, just shy of 41 millimeters. Okay, 40.9, looks like 975. Okay. Uh, the inside, the inside diameter of the chimney is five, six, six point five, six, seven, eight point two five. So we're talking about six point eight two five millimeters on the inside figure, just shy of seven millimeters on the inside there. Okay, so we're going to pop this here. You have here at the base, your standard 510 connector. You have the CE mark. Uh, don't, don't, you know, just don't bend it, recycle it. I want you to call your attention here to this 510 connector. This 510 connector is absolutely flat, okay? This center pin does not, I repeat, does not extend past the bottom edge of the 510 connector. So I would not, under any way, shape, form, uh, think of using this on any kind of a uh, mechanical hybrid uh, connector. Um, yeah, just don't do it. It's not a good idea, okay? Uh, you have uh, your Cylon airflows here. They're click stops, you can hear. 
Okay, and all the way opened, all the way closed. And what happens on one side happens on the other side as well. Uh, you have your glass here, your glass uh, for the tank. Inside you have your coil. And up here at the top you have your fill mechanism. Now, unlike the other Scion, the original Scion, which had the uh, screw on top, this, like the, um, the Ares, has a slide. And it, it keeps this in place with a little ball bearing that you can see right there. And it slides along this track here and fully detents into here to keep it closed. Now, this silicon gasket here on the kidney-shaped hole, which is where you're filling uh, your tank up in, is a little bit small. Um, if you use a needle nose or if you use a syringe to fill your tank, um, even if you use one of these things, okay, you'll have no problems. If you decide to use a standard glass pipette from a 30, 60, or 120 mil, um, you know, dripper bottle, mm, you can do it, but it's going to get messy. Just saying. Okay. So yeah, um, I'd like to have seen this a little bit larger, but Hey, it is what it is. I didn't design this. All right. So we're going to take this and we're going to open this up now. And as you can see, this is your coil. Now look at that big honking coil. That is your 0.28 Cantal A1 recommended 100 to 200 watts. This coil is actually a dual parallel coil. As you can see here, you have your regular wire coming here from the down below section, which is uh, your negative side, okay? That comes around here and right about there, it's it, the non-resistance wire is welded to your Canthal resistance wire. And from there on down, it's dual wire until you get down here into the base where it then gets welded to a single non-resistance wire and then goes to the center connector for matching up with this plate here, which then makes contact with this ring. Now, as I said before, this is your center connector. That's your center pin connector. Okay. And this is the silicon base here that uh, acts as insulator, keeping the center pin away from uh, the negative uh, side of your uh, connection, which is the housing of the tank itself. Okay, and if I, so I'm pushing this in here, push that into place, you can see I'm pushing that all the way in. That's still absolutely flat, even with that 510. So, yeah, don't use this on a hybrid. Okay, so that is your big coil. This is, as I said, a dual parallel coil. The other one, the 0.5 ohm, which is 70 to 110, is three single coils. They all use Japanese organic cotton in them. And uh, when you go to, if you decide that you're going to be using uh, these coil heads, make sure, make sure that you thoroughly saturate that cotton before you even ever consider hitting the fire button. Because if you start doing anything like anywhere near the rating rated capacity on these things, the second you hit this, if you have not got those that cotton thoroughly, completely saturated, this thing is good. Those coils are going to fry that cotton and you're going to have the worst vape that you've ever had in your life. Okay? Just saying. Make sure you prime this coil before you start to turn around and start vaping it. And after you've primed it and you've installed this in here and you've reassembled everything here and you fill this thing up with your juice, leave it sit for a good three or four minutes, five minutes before you start vaping it because you want to make sure even though 
I highly suggest that you also put juice on each one of these uh, juice inlets here. You want to make sure that that cotton is thoroughly saturated. I'm not, I can't say this enough, okay? Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that, all right? So you're gonna put this on back, back on like so. Open up the airflow. Now, this thing here, you can f open this up and fill this, okay? without closing these air holes. That cotton is so tightly packed in here, you do not have to worry about how, closing the air holes as a precaution like you do with some other tanks to make sure that it flows out. I have turned around and I have used the 70 to 110 coil in here, uh, in the silver one, um, quite a bit. And I have just um, left the airflow wide open Pop this thing open, filled it up, closed it up, never had a bit of a leak at all. This thing does not leak. Okay, and if you wick up the RTA deck like I'm about to show you, you won't have any kind of leakage from the RTA deck either. Okay, so now that you've seen what it looks like, oh, and like I said, this is an A10 style. Uh, drip tip, not a goon style. This is an A10 style because, as you can see here, the O-rings are on the drip tip itself, not on the inside of the tank. That makes this an A10 style. If the O-rings are in here, inside the uh, tank itself, that would be a goon style. So, any A10 connect, any A10 drip tip, fit in here, no problems. Okay. So let's put this back inside here and put this away. And we're going to bring out the silver one. This is the one that I'm keeping. This black one here. This is the one that I'm putting up for giveaway here on the channel. Um, one thing I'm going to make sure, sure you say. I'm going to make sure to say here. Somewhere during either this build cam sequence or during the face cam sequence, there's going to be a code that's going to flash across the screen. Actually, it's going to tumble across the screen. Um, copy down that code, because if you don't copy down that code, you're not going to be able to enter to win this. Okay? So, just saying. Okay, so we're going to take this off here now. Um, I have been playing with this RTA deck um, a lot. Now, I like the 70 to 110 uh, 0.5 ohm uh, coil head. I've played with that a lot. Um, I have played with the 100 to 200 ohm for about one tank full. Um, that's about all I could take. Um, it was just way too hot for me. Uh, I mean, it was just like absolutely horrendously hot. I, I just couldn't deal with it. Um, it worked fine, didn't leak a whit, um, fantastic vape, plenty of clouds, flavor was excellent, it was just too much for me, okay, so yeah, um, this is the one that I've been playing with, now, also considering the fact that I'm a cheap son of a bitch, um, I'm not going to spend nine, ten dollars, um, for three coil heads, no matter how long they last. And believe me, these things are capable of lasting a long time, okay? Um, I'm just not that, I'm just not willing to spend that kind of money. Not when I can turn around and get a roll of 100 feet of Cantal wire for <laughs> three, four dollars, okay? The cost of less than one coil in there, I can turn around and make hundreds of coils. Uh, sorry, not happening. This cheap Irishman is not going to go around and spend that kind of money. Uh -uh. Nope. Okay, so we're going to put this in here. All the specifications on both the build deck and all of the other uh, parts of the tank, as I said earlier, I put up there when be between the... Um, the introduction and coming in here to FaceTime. So if you really want to know 
every last possible thing that's about this deck and about the tank and all the coils that are in there, go back there and take a look and it will tell you everything because I've gone into everything. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to put two coils in here, okay, and then I'm gonna wick them. There's a couple of little tricks here with the coiling as well as with the wicking, okay, that I wanna turn around and I wanna, I, I wanna show you. Okay, I know this is a standard velocity deck and all of that. And being that it's a standard velocity deck, uh, anybody should be able to do it. But there's a couple of little things that I want, really, really do want to turn around and show you about this. Okay, first off, um, you want to know what the size of these um, da, posts are. Okay, um, I measure them at three millimeters. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm using the coily here to measure the size of the post. As you can see, this is three millimeters. So I have here my Coilmaster coiling jig. I have the two coils that I have previously wrapped on this three millimeter inside diameter, uh, excuse me, outside diameter uh, coiling post and left the legs. So now I'm going to take these and I'm going to drop them in here into the three millimeter um, portion. And I'm just going to snip off these legs very carefully. And come on, stay there. Thank you. And take the excess off without jamming my hand. Thank you very much. Let's just keep an eye on those. We don't need to have that go running right through our hands. Then we're gonna take the other one here and we're gonna pop that in there like so. Uh, excuse me. This crazy spring that we've been having. My sinuses are running like a nag at Pimlico. Okay, so we're gonna pop that over here. That's three and number four. Boom. Okay, so we have our two coils with the legs cut, and I am going to take the excess wire from the legs, put that in the garbage can so I don't wind up with getting it in my foot, and I am going to open up these screws here, these grub screws, make sure they're wide open, makes life so much easier. And yeah, there we go. Okay, once again, like I said, three millimeter mandrel uh, for a in three millimeter inside diameter coil. We're gonna pop the coil on there and we're going to throw this in here. Now these are uh, five wraps, five, well actually five and a half turns because it is a um, coil with both of the legs going in the same direction. So yeah, it's five and a half turns. The wire is 26 AWG or 0 0.4 millimeters. The inside diameter of the coil is three millimeters. And we're gonna be doing a dual coil here. And these are, should be coming out at roughly around uh, 0.45 to 0.5 for total resistance uh, between the two coils. So the last set that I had in here that were exactly like this came out at 0.47. And pop that there. Just wanna make sure it's going in the right hole there. <laughs> uh, insert joke here. So we're going to turn that and now as you can see here, I measured that at a three millimeter post. Uh, if you really look carefully, you can see I've still got some wire sticking out here. That's because when you measure the legs, you really should go find out what the measure, leg measurement is, uh, the, the post measurement, and then go a one under. But three millimeters is the shortest that the coily goes to. So. You can't turn around, I can't cut it down for a 2.5 millimeter. So I'd have to go with the three and then just 
take off that little extra that comes sticking through, which really isn't that much. So I'm going to squish the coil in a little here. And then we're going to pull this out so that way it sits directly over that airflow. And then we're going to adjust, pull it out, squish it in a little bit here. And because this is a spaced coil, this thing should glow up almost perfectly. And that is on an angle, so we want to bring that nice and level. Come on, bugger. Here you go. Once you, I said nice and level. Uh-oh, didn't get the coil in there completely. Uh, the leg just popped out. Bloody hell. Okay. Going to play games with Daddy, aren't you? Yeah, you are, aren't you? Huh. Oh, boy. I thought of this was going to be coming and doing a nice and easy one. No. Of course not. Of course this is not going to be easy. Never is. Okay, so... I'm going to squish this in, make sure those legs are going in the same direction, like so. Beep, beep yourself. And make sure those legs. Okay. Flatten them out. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Be a good little guy. There you go. And you go in there. And we tighten you down like that. Nice and tight. Okay. Spin you around here. Make sure you're poking in there. Yes, there's your wire. Even after I clipped it and it was poking through, it still didn't want to hold. Okay, that's nice and tight. Push that in, push that in, pull that out. Okay. And Straighten it out, bring it out like so. Yeah, right back to where we are. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Good. Now we're going to go here with the other side. And once again, lower side, upper side. Put this upper side in first because that's just like the easiest one to do. Tighten that in like that. And push that in there. Put that in there. And make sure that it's in there, like so. Tighten that down. Good. Push in. Push in, pull out, and center. We got it? Yeah, we got it. We just have to make sure that this is... Like so. And what are we doing on the time here? 31 minutes. Okay. Well, it's a lot better than the other last time I tried this. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we got here. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. 0 0.42. All right, we'll burn that in. As you can see, because it's a space coil, every time it burns in perfectly. And you just need to hit that once like that just to get off any uh, machining oils that might be on the coil, any 
uh, finger, finger gunk that might have gotten on there while you were winding it and everything else, just to make sure it's absolutely clean. Okay, and there we go, 0 0.50. Hmm, I did say that it was going to come between point, uh, what did I say? Between 4.5 and 5.0? Oh? Well, it's just a little over. It's, that, uh, that, uh, it went under. There it goes. It went under. Ah, I knew it. Okay, cool. Okay, now, cotton. I've already turned around. I've already uh, met the, made these up. Cotton, ordinary Kojendo or uh Koji um, pads, two millimeters wide, in line with the um, in line with the, the fiber of the cotton. Um, take off the outer skins, and this is what you get: nice tight, make a nice tight roll. Bada bink! Oh come on, give me a break. Okay, let's throw that in there like that. Now when you're putting this in you want to make sure that it's tight enough now watch the center of this coil here okay as I pull that you see how that's moving that's what you want you want that cotton in there that tight because if you don't get it in there like that you're gonna wind up getting spit back city okay that's with any coil any coil not just this tank any coil okay um, because what happens is, is the metal of the coil expands faster than the cotton expands. Juice gets in between the metal of the coil and the cotton. And the cotton, the, the, the coil itself vaporizes that and it explodes. Boom. Spit back. Okay. So we're going to cut this here. And we're going to cut this here. Just cutting to the outside of the, uh, the deck here. Okay. And move that out of the way. And then we're going to take this one. Same thing. Spin it in. When you spin your cotton in like that, you can get it a little bit tighter. And it will still come in with no problems. Uh, if you just try to haul it in without giving it that twist, um, it's going to deform the coil. You give it that little bit of a twist. That little bit of a twisting motion when you bring it in and you can turn around and get cotton packed in there like uh, you don't want to know and you won't have spit back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to fluff this up. You see that little hard line of cotton there that when I cut it, you want to break that up. Okay, same thing. With this other side over here, you want to break that up. You want to get that all nice and fluffed out. All right, and then you're going to take this and pull that over like so. You want to just pull a little, just a little bit here off. Oh. Sorry about that. That was my phone going off. Uh, so I'm just going to fluff this out here just to make sure that the wires, that the fibers are going in the right direction. Go. And then we're going to take this. And now this here is the juice channel for this one and the juice channel here, the two for that coil. So you're going to take this. Like so, grab a hold, twist it, turn it, and place it in. So what you're looking to do is you're looking to get this end here, these little fibers here at the very end, to be facing straight down into that juice hole and just touching the bottom of the juice intake holes. So you're going to pop this in like so. Remember, neatness counts. If it's sloppy, if you're just shoving these cottons, the, the ends of these cottons into here, um, yeah, it might work, most likely. 
it won't. And you wind up having nothing but issues with either dry hits if you're pushing it in too much, or uh, you're going to wind up having um, massive flooding if you don't put in enough cotton. So this, doing it like this, the way I'm showing you right now, and having those, the ends, these ends here, just touching the bottom. As you can see here, it's just showing up in there and just touching the bottom. That will ensure that you get just the right amount of cotton in there and that it will be wicking just the right amount of juice to your coil. I've, after I've been doing this so long, um, very rarely do I ever get a dry hit. Only if I'm doing it on a dripper. That's pretty much a dripper or even a squonker. That's pretty much where I get dry hits. Um, tanks like this, mm -mm. I haven't gotten a dry hit in so long on a tank like this. By doing this kind of thing that I'm showing you here right now and making sure that it's properly placed like this, no dry hits. Fluffed out, bring it in like that, take a little of the excess fibers out. Not much, you just want to take one or two just to make sure that the, the fibers are straight. And then push it in, like so. I learned to do this kind of wicking on my K-Fun, okay? This is the same kind of wicking that I do on my K-Fun. I do it on all my tanks. And as I said, I have not had a dry hit in so long. And, and, and by making sure that it goes in like this, as you can see, there's the fibers right there. This thing will not flood. It just won't flood. Neatness counts. Just like your mama told you. Neatness counts. All right, I'm just going to use this in a can you can because I got it here because I was showing you earlier uh, just to juice this up. This is the same juice that I will normally use. I've been normally using. This is my, um, oh, what is it now? Um, <sighs> black and red berries uh, with uh, vanilla cheesecake. Okay, I'm going to pop that in there. Put some juice in there. Put some juice in there. And some more juice over here, like so. Come on, soak in. There you go. Soaking in nicely. And pop some juice in here. Pop some juice under here. A little juice under there. Put some juice across the wires here. Heat this. Get the juice into that into the coils. Excuse me, into the cotton there, inside the coil. And put a little juice in there. Little juice there, little drop there. Little drop there. And another little drop right there. Okay. So, put this in here. Okay. I'm going to screw this on into place here. And since we know that this was a 0.50, I'm going to double check now that I put this on to make sure that it hasn't changed. 0 0.46, 0 0.47, close enough for government work. We have no short between the coils and the, um, and the outside part of the uh, atomization chamber. Now, as you can see here, I have five milliliters of juice in the syringe, and I'm just going to verify that we are getting what the uh, tank holds here. I'm just going to put this in until it comes up and starts bubbling up through that hole. Back it off just a little bit. And that means we have 1.6 1. 1. left. Okay, so 1.65. So we got 3.4, 3.4 milliliters. 
3.4 to 4 to 5. Right. I'm, uh, I'm lousy with math. What can I tell you? Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's head up to FaceTime. Talk about this. I have some information on both the Scion and the Scion 2 tanks. Um, that I want to tell you about. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, meet you at Topside. Hey, everybody. Glad to see you made it Topside okay. Um, yeah, okay. So what we're looking at today is we're looking at the Scion 2. Um, this is the silver one, the one I uh, just uh, got through uh, building on the build cam just a minute or two ago. And... Um, I've got it on top of my Council of Ake Tempest. Uh, this is a 200 watt box mod, uh, three battery. Um, review for this is going to be coming up uh, probably in another week or so. Um, be, a, be on the lookout for it. Um, yeah. Um, now, normally I don't vape at the kind of watts that this thing here was designed to handle uh, most especially with the 0.28 um, 100 to 200 watt coil so I have very little experience with those kind of wattages so I just want to get that out there right now um, so everything that I'm going to be saying about this coil especially in those wattage ranges bear that in mind okay um, now my normal wattage ranges that I, I usually work at are between 35 and 50 watts okay um, the resistance ranges that I usually vape at are somewhere between 0.3 and 0.7 ish um I usually try to keep it in the 0.5 range um that's where i like it okay uh it gives me a good uh nice temperature gives me a full flavorful vape um plenty of cloud production it, it's just where i personally have found that i like to have my vape okay so that's that's where it comes from Okay, now the 0.5 ohm coil, the triple single coil that comes with this as the secondary coil, the one on the, 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 the right side, um, that's a fantastic coil. That is a really, really fantastic coil. I was loving it. Okay, the temperature was just right. Um, now it says to vape it between 70 and 110. I was vaping it at 50 watts. It was a cool vape. Um, it was a very flavorful vape. The, 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 the vape was nicely saturated with flavor. Um, the cloud production was fantastic with it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And when I brought it up to about 70, 80 watts, it was still cool enough that I could turn around and I could really enjoy it, um, but not hot enough that I was feeling like, oh my God, my lungs and my throat are on fire. What the heck is going on here? No, it was fantastic. It was really good. Um, so if you vape like, if you like your vapes the way I like them, that 0.5 ohm coil that's in there, that's really good. Um, the RTA deck, that I have in here right now. Um, I'm vaping this at 47 watts, okay? Uh, my USA ohm meter said it was a 0.49, verging on a 0.5 ohm. The, the, the wattage, the resistance range in here is saying that it's coming out at 0.41, okay? Um, this is what I get, okay? White out. Yeah. Cloud production on this thing is fantastic. Okay. Um, 
the flavor is fully saturated. I mean, the flavor is excellent. Okay. Um, I've played with this thing with the, the, the tricoil, the, the 70 to 110. Uh, the most I got it up to was about 90, 95 watts, somewhere around there. Uh, I just couldn't take it anymore, uh, any, any higher. The flavor was absolutely fantastic. It was never airy. It was never uh, washed out or muted. The flavor was always right there. Um, the build quality on this tank is absolutely fantastic. The first time I took it out of it, you could feel the weight on it. You could feel the, the, the quality of the steel, of the stainless steel that they use in it. Um, I was absolutely blown away. Um, absolutely fantastic quality. I mean, the machining of the parts, everything works just the way it should. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've got no complaints with this tank at all. Now with the 0 0.28, 100 to 200 ohms. Now, like I said, I don't normally vape in those ranges. Uh, so I really don't have a point of reference for it. All I can say is what I've taste what I tasted on here. When I put this juice, which is the same juice that I, I I've been using all along, um, ugh, when I make my juice, I make it in a liter size bottle. Okay, so I use it for everything. This is ah, oh, this thing is dry. It's gonna drive me crazy. Um, when I turn around and when I'm evaluating a tank, I turn around. And I use one of three juices that I make, uh, this being one of them. Um, so I have a quality level to turn around and go against. Um, this juice, when I put it in there, I never got it anywhere near 200 watts. I think the, the highest I ever got it was like 120 watts before I just couldn't take it anymore. But I was at that wattage level, the flavor was still pretty, pretty damn good. Um, it wasn't saturated, fully saturated vape like I, I'm used to. Um, the flavor was still there. You could definitely taste all of the, 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 the flavors in there. As a matter of fact, I tasted a couple of flavors in there. Very caramelly flavor. That may have been because the juice was at such a high wattage. A um, couple of other flavors that were in there. You'll have to excuse me. I just had lunch a little while ago. Um, that I just never tasted before at those at, at the wattages that I normally work at. So it was like, hmm, this is interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was okay. Like I said, I don't normally, I don't have a normal um, point of reference for those kind of wattages. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the flavor of this juice should be at those wattages. But it was, it tasted okay to me. The cloud production was pretty good. It was a little bit, a little bit airy because the, the that big honking coil that's in there with it's got like oh, I didn't even measure it I think it's like about a seven or eight millimeter diameter intern inside diameter I mean I looked at that thing and I was like holy crap this thing is a big coil um so yeah um it, it seemed to work fine it worked very fine uh, never had a problem with either flooding. The the it always turned around and controlled the juice very well, so there was no flooding issues. Um, there was no dry hits any way, shape, or form. It was always wicking properly. I mean, the wicking was fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I it it worked, it worked, and I was very very surprised, very shocked. I should say. Now, if I was the kind of vapor that vaped anywhere in the 100 to 200 watt range, okay, um, I'd probably be a very happy camper with it. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I can't speak for it. 
Um, this is the best that I can do to explain what I, my experience was were with that coil. Um, the majority of my experiences were with this RTA deck because being, being a builder um, and being a cheap SOB, um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go out and spend $14, $15 for three coils, okay? Even $9 at the cheapest that I've seen uh, the coils going for, $9, $10, 9 and change, $10. Um, I get 10 bucks. I can turn around and can get 100 feet of wire that can turn around and last me a year and a half, two years. I'm still working on a roll of wire over here that I got a year and a half ago, and I'm not even close to turn around and be in the end at the end of it. Okay, it's a hundred feet of wire. All right, and it, the most I use on a coil is set on on a coil is maybe six inches of wire. Yeah, do the math yourself. Okay, that's the reason why I build. Plus, it also gives me the ability to experiment and to try different things. Okay experimentation is very big with me all right so yeah that's that's what i've been playing with mostly this rta deck and this rta deck is really really good uh i sincerely suggest that if you get this tank get the rba deck okay it future proofs the tank it's backward compatible with a regular scion with the the, the scion one tank um yeah it, it's it's fantastic and it works very well now i do have to say one thing about this <clears throat> excuse me i don't remember where i was reading it but there was a, somebody was mentioning interchangeability of parts between the scion one and the scion two okay now um i used to have a scion one tank I gave it away because I really wasn't, it really didn't float my boat at the time. Um, so I put it up, I put it up as a giveaway. So when I found out that they had the, the quote, lantern glasses, and after what I had read, I said, oh, okay, well, let's see. So I went out, I went to the Inakin website, okay, um, I'll put the, um, I'll put the information for where this is located. So if you have a regular Scion one, you can pick these up. This is a six mil glass. Even with the um, the coils, the regular Scion coils, which are interchangeable between the Scion one and the Scion two, you'll get six mils of juice in, in with this, okay? So yeah, I bought, the, bought a couple of these and they don't work on the Scion two. Nope. The glass, I think it must be with the chimney. I think there's a difference in the size of the chimney, the length of the chimney part that, that screws onto the top of the coil between the Scion 1 and the Scion 2. Um, this lantern glass does not work with the Scion 2. Okay. Luckily, I have seen that uh, Inakin is going to be coming out with a standard bubble glass, you know, the one with the flat sides, not kind of rounded like that is see how that sides are rounded on that um standard bubble glass with the where it comes down goes like this like so and like so and then then down um they're going to be coming out with that soon um probably going to be releasing that at the same time as they release the new plexus coils um information on the plexus coil is at the beginning of this uh video where i have all of the um the, the tech specs for the tank and everything else, it's, it's right in there. I think it's a 0.15 or a 0.18, I forget, uh, mm, duh. Um, but that new Plexus coil is going to be coming out soon. And I believe that they're coming out with it at the same time that they're going to be coming out with the bubble glass. I'm also, I'll put up a, uh, a screen in a minute or two that's going to have information on it as to where I've seen places that not only have the plexus, excuse me, but also have the bubble glass available. Um, so you can check it out for yourself. Um, I highly, 
suggest if you get this tank, whether you get use the RBA deck in here, or if you use one of the other regular co standard coil heads that go with this thing, uh, I really suggest that you see about getting the bubble glass for this. This is three and 3.4, 3.5 millimeters, uh, milliliters. I keep saying millimeters. Uh, 3.4, 3.5 milliliters with this here. Now, with this RBA deck in here, um, I can pretty much get away with um, not having to fill it up quite so often, but when you put in the, the 0.5 or the 0.28 ohm coil in here, this thing's a bloody juiceaholic. Okay, and I find myself filling this thing up a lot faster than I normally fill up other tanks. Um, like my aroma mize that I have here on my 8 cigar uh, 75 VT75D. I don't have to fill this thing up half as much. Uh, well, granted, this is a 5 mil glass in here, but when even when it gets like halfway down or two thirds of the way down, like it is right now, um, I have a coils in here that are very similar to this. As a matter of fact, uh, these are 0.307 ohm coils in here. I'm vaping this at, uh, I think it's like about 45 watts. Okay. Uh, very comparable to this. This drinks the juice. Okay. More so than this. You'll have to excuse me. The guys from the park are outside. They're cutting grass over there and making a whole hell of a noise and I've got the window closed over here so uh, and even with that you can still hear them all right so having said all that what am I going to give this tank I'm going to give this tank two thumbs up I am very very happy very very contented with this tank um, this tank is an excellent tank the build quality, the, the quality of the materials, the quality of the manufacturing on this tank is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the first time I took it out of the package, I was totally blown away with how good this thing felt in my hands. Okay. Um, the weight of it, the, the feel of the metal itself, you know, how when if I don't know if you ever noticed it, but when you get a really good piece of steel in your hands and you can feel the, the feel the, the steel itself it has its own feel and this thing felt quality um the black tank the the 510 coils uh the the 510 connector is not painted in any way shape or form um there's no problem with uh connectivity between the the atomizer and the mod it, it just works it works very well and it's a good quality piece of of kit um it is well worth the price so as i said i'm going to give this thing two thumbs up because of that and i highly if you're really interested in getting yourself a tank that will give you clouds with good flavor and everything else whether you're vaping at uh, 35, 45, 50 watts, or you're up in the 100 range, 100 plus range, this thing will handle it. Um, the filling of the juice port, it's, well, it's, it's really good. Um, it's a little, bit of, a little bit of an issue if you're using a glass pipette uh, dripper bottle. Um, it just barely fits in there and there's just barely enough room if you've got any kind of juice on the outside of the pipette it's gonna go all, it's gonna go all over the place that could be a little bit bigger um, I wish they would give you two different uh, Delrin mouth tip uh, drip tips on there kind of like this one here which I switched out from this is the standard one you get two of these these conical ones in the package I kind of like the straight ones it's just my style um, yeah um, I wish that that would be something that they would do um, I understand that this will come with the bubble glass um, comes with the bubble glass in the new um, I forget the name of the uh, the mod that they just came out with. Um, Proton, the Proton tank. 
uh, Proton Mod, excuse me. Uh, the kit, they offer this coming with the Proton Mod in a kit form, and it comes with, the bu with a bubble glass in there. That's a fantastic thing. Um, I'm, as soon as I can get, my ch get a chance to get my paws on um, one of the, uh, the, the new Plexus uh, coils, uh, or a couple of them, I'm going to try them out in here to see how it works. Um, I have a funny feeling that it's going to work out very nicely, but I will find out and I will report at a later date as to whether or not I think it's worth it. Okay. Um, so that's, that's all I have for you. Um, do I think this tank is worth, uh, the money? Yes. Do I think that you would like this tank if you went out and bought it? Yes, I do. Would I recommend it? Oh, hell yeah. Um, I did get this tank free for the purposes of review from Inakin, but that in no way, shape, or form um, colors my, my take on this tank. If this thing was garbage, I would tell you it's garbage. If it, I, This thing is definitely not garbage. This is a very, very well worth the money and very good tank. Definitely get the RBA deck when you turn around and when you buy this, okay? Definitely get the RBA deck. You will not go wrong by getting it. Okay, um, before I go anywhere, I just want to remind you, I had some place during this video, the, um, the code came bouncing across the bottom of the screen here. Um, I hope that you um, copied it down. If not, you're going to have to go back and watch the video because you need that. Uh, if you want to enter for getting yourself a chance to win this, this little baby, um, go to the uh, Google Forms address that's going to show up down here in the description box. Uh, fill out the form. Um, I'm going to be trying to get this up on the 11th of May. I'm going to run this until... <sighs> you know what? I'm going to turn around. I'm going to run this till midnight of the 23rd into the 24th. Um, 2400 on the 23rd, 0000, 0, 0, 0 hours on the 24th. That's when I'm going to close this. Um, I will draw the winner, um, here at my home. It's not going to be alive. I'm going to draw it. I'm going to record it and I will put it up on as a posted video sometime on the 25th. So if you are a, um, subscriber and you have turned on notifications, when I post that video up, you will be notified and you will find out. Now, all of the information on how to win and the rules, I'm going to post up right now. So that way you can see what the rules are. Just hit the pause button or the space bar on your keyboard and you can go through each and every one of these rules, uh, these panels. Um, the winner of this particular tank will be responsible for postage. Um, I think it's like about seven, eight, nine dollars, something like that for priority mail from here in Jersey to any place in the country. If you're outside the States, um, I'm going to have to find out what the price of the postage is. I will let you know. Uh, spells out in there exactly what's the um, what the procedure is going to be. Um, you'll have two weeks, um, 14 days from the date that I post the uh, the drawing uh, video to get in touch with me. So yeah, just go back and and watch the thing, or you can go down into the description box below. I will have the full rules down there also okay having said all of that thank you thank you very much for joining me today 
thank you for putting up with my non scheduled uh, posting of videos um, as I said this is this is not my job this is my hobby this is my passion I try to put up as much as I can but real life comes first so once again thank you very much for joining me may the road rise to meet you may the wind be ever at your back may the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead take care Bye for now.